Welcome to the playground. You think you've seen it all? Neuwelts FM, leading your marketing to where the magic happens. Ready for transformation? It might not work. That's why I do it. Who says that doesn't work? And here is your host. Ingo Stoll. Hello and welcome everybody to episode number 12 of Neuwerts FM, the podcast for routine killers and new marketing. I am your host Ingo Stoll and I'm grateful to present you another international episode in which you will find tips and insights on how you can make more out of your next conference attendance. We're going to challenge the question real versus virtual conferences, which one delivers more value. And we talk to one of the authorities in the international conference business. Mike Stelzner, the founder of Social Media Examiner, is with us in the Insights interview. So thanks for taking your time. And we are now about to leave the comfort zone of conferencing as you used to know it and turn Neuwerts to where the magic happens. Kick off. Kick off. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I love to go to conferences when there's great people, great speakers and this special atmosphere that inspires me to think differently. You know what I mean? I talk about these special events when you get into the flow and start thinking about changing the way you work. Or how do you actually do your marketing or even reconsider the projects that you are doing at the moment? So, But there was a time when I nearly lost my motivation to visit conferences because the percentage of inspiration, so to see, speak, my, my outcome in terms of new knowledge and wisdom and relation became pretty poor. Maybe I visited the wrong events or talked to the wrong people, might be. But uh, all in all, I think I got in a little routine on conference business and these, uh, well, these presentations right from the front. But luckily, lucky me, all that changed uh, forever since the first bar camps came up and I visited my first bar camp in Hanover back in 2008. I think these types of new conferencing formats were... Well, it's all about sharing knowledge and letting people participate is exactly what I missed all these years were perfect location offered perfect presentations, but there was no spirit, you know, no spirit, no inspiration. And um, yeah, these changed, uh, fortunately, with visiting the bar camps, so they were pretty chaotic, but um, I came back to the real honest uh, well, reason to go to events, and this is networking and really getting inspiration from people. So my first bar camp motivated me to come up with my own idea of a new conference 2.0, because, um, yeah, not many people go to bar camps or went uh, back in 2008, so it needed some bridge to um, bring people from the classical conferences over to new formats. So in autumn 2008, I organized the first convention camp, which was a mashup between a bar camp and a classical convention. So the convention camp started with 250 attendees in 2008 and became one of the biggest events on digital transformation and inspiration in Germany over the next five years, hosting 1,600 people back in 2012 and having great thought leaders like Julian Assange, Gerd Leonard and Nicholas Carr right on its stage. So yes, I'm a bit proud of that. And um, these days you find l many amazing uh, events and a great variety of new and fresh events and formats. And of course, you still find the bar camps and I highly recommend you go to visit your first bar camp if you haven't been on one so far but uh, yeah there are many many more events no chance to mention all of them right here right now 
but I will put some on the tips for upcoming events in the show notes uh, of this episode number 12. Um, but right here and now I would like to focus on two events I participated over the last month and I will bring you my personal guide on how you can make more out of your next conference or event you're going to be participating. So the first one is the so-called Social Media Marketing World 2014 uh, in San Diego which was a conference in the real world, of course. And the second one is the Social Media Success Summit, which is a virtual conference. As you can imagine, it takes a slight, uh, it makes a slight difference whether you physically attend a conference or whether you spend your time with others online in some sort of video or slide presentation, listening to the voice of a speaker and maybe get involved in a parallel chat discussion. I'm pretty sure you took part in a physical conference, um, but I don't know whether you attended a virtual conference already. So let's compare both options and their typical adventures quickly. First, um, a real world conference like the social media marketing world has uh, three main advantages. One is the human to human connection. I mean, you really uh, you really um, meet people you haven't met before. Maybe you meet some old uh, friends as well you haven't seen for quite a long time. And uh, I think this is what we are as, as humans are made for, to get in touch with others. And um, of course, advantage number two is you can do networking at its best, uh, getting to know new people and maybe start a lifelong relationship or a great business deal in the upcoming month, whatever. So um, networking is definitely uh, easiest if you meet people one-on-one. -on -one. And um, yeah, and then you have the 3D impression. This is what I call having all together you can you can see people you can smell people you can look them right straight in the eyes so you can see whether there's real affection and uh, yeah all this is only possible if you stand right in front of them and do this eye to eye so this is what i call the 3d impression yeah so um these are the advantages of a physical conference. So what about the virtual ones? Um, yeah, like, um, like the Social Media Success Summit. First and uh, foremost, you save a lot of time and you save a lot of money because um, you don't have the travel expenses and you don't uh, need to you know, sit around in the waiting areas of airports um, and uh, what have you. So, um, yeah, normally attending physical conferences is much more expensive, maybe by the factor of three up to ten, because um, you need a hotel as well, and so on and so on. So saving your time and money is one of the biggest advantages. The second one is the convenience. You definitely have no hustle uh, with the travels, uh, and you don't suffer jet lags and what have you. And, uh, well, you can attend from home wearing panties only if you wish to while attending uh, some great presentations. So uh, it's up to you and it's all about convenience. And number three is you can network as well using Twitter, for example, or follow people on other social platforms. So it's uh, not the same, of course, um, but there's a great chance to do networking as well. So I did both on the subject of social media with a pretty comparable lineup of great speakers from Mike Stelzner's network, one on the physical social media marketing world and one on the virtual social media success summit conference. So I know both formats and still alter between them. And I'm about to take part uh, and already sign up for the next virtual conference, the Social Media Success Summit 2014, starting in October this year. Uh, you will find the link and best available prices in the show notes. 
And in my view, attending a virtual conference is a perfect start if you are new on a topic or if you are a beginner and want to get into it, like getting into all these social media topics like... Um, well, getting to know the advantages of all the different channels and trying to set up your own social media strategy and so on and so on. So um, if you're new um, and um, if you consider a new event platform you and you want to get an impression of the quality and your personal value out of it, um, I recommend you start looking for a virtual conference. And it's a great option to stay updated and keep in touch um, as a follow-up after you visited maybe a physical conference. So um, this is what I did right now. I started with a virtual conference in October last year. And in March, actually, I was present on the physical conference in San Diego. And now on October, I will attend the virtual conference again. I will tell you now where you can find a perfect chance to be part of a great half-day conference on building your influence right now. It's a virtual conference and it's uh, actually happening on July 30th um, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And Justin Wise, uh, which by the way is the head of one of my favorite podcasts, Think Digital, assembled an awesome lineup, including Gary Vaynerchuk, Mary Smith, Seth Godin or Ben Armand, and Eric Fisher, of course, and a dozen, um, well, more of great speakers. And uh, it's a virtual conference and it's completely for free. So, um, yeah, I recommend you go to buildyourinfluence.co buildyourinfluence.co or see the link up in the Neuwetz FM show notes and register for free and maybe start taking part in your first virtual conference ever. Um, it will be a blast, I'm pretty sure. So you can do this and it's the easiest way to get into virtual conferencing and a perfect off-ramp for the next Social Media Success Summit in 2014 in October because uh, this will be several weeks and several evenings uh, for me here over in Germany or well I think I'm not quite sure I think it starts around about the afternoon hours if it comes to Eastern time so um, you will find the link of course in the show notes as well or on the social media examiner website but um, yeah so that's the virtual path um, I recommend you go. But uh, if it comes to relation building and magic moments, um, you will remember for a long time, nothing beats a presence at a real world event. So I can tell you it is great to be retweeted by a top, fluence, top influencer like Michael Stelzner for the first time. But seeing that person coming down the hall and shaking your hand with a smile after you listen to him probably a thousand times on the podcast episodes and maybe read even more blog posts up front is absolutely priceless. And of course, this is completely different and no chance to ever have these moments on a virtual conference. And I definitely would have missed out on, well, for example, Ted Rubin's socks on the social media marketing world, which layered the extraordinary, lasered the extraordinary and, and colorful patterns right onto my retina for probably weeks. Um, I wouldn't have seen them on the virtual conference. And there are so, so many great moments and memories uh, coming up to my mind from this uh, conference in March. So it's not necessarily great knowledge. I couldn't have found on the web somewhere else or within this, well, particularly in the speakers' blogs or videos or podcasts. Um, if you ask me, it's 90% for the networking and relation building. You should go and spend all your money and time and effort to attend a real conference. And it's only 10% new knowledge coming up from the center stage 
I talked to Sascha Pallenberg, which is an uh, attack blogger living in Taipei, a good friend of mine. Sascha, if you listen to that, um, send you greetings over. Um, I know that Sascha has said he's only visiting conferences for network reasons now. So, um, yeah, I think for me, it's nowadays it's 90% networking and this is why i go there and um yeah this is unbeatable and you can't really um, benefit from the networking part that much in a virtual conference therefore i would present you um my tips my personal tips on how you can boost your value uh, from attending your next conference real or virtual and i would love to start with the real conferences. But in order to give you a better impression of what we're talking about, um, I would love to fit in the interview with the founder and organizer of the social media marketing world, Mr. Michael Stelzner, recorded right on his own conference in March this year. Now. <laughs> Michael Stelzner most likely needs no further introduction, but let me mention that he's not only the founder of Social Media Examiner, author of the book Launch, a white paper pioneer, professional podcaster, founder of My Kids Adventures and a very talented animal imitator. He's also the main reason for me to fly all the way over from Germany to San Diego and the greatest conference host you can imagine. Okay, so this is a very special moment, um, being here guest on your social media marketing world. Of course, we're going to talk to Mike Stelzner now, who is host and actually the founder and, well, the head behind all that. So, Michael, I'm very proud to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm glad you came all the way over here. Yes, yeah, it was definitely worth it. So. Um, yeah, what made you coming up with the idea of the social media marketing world? Because it's a physical conference and you did like virtual conferences before. Correct. So what's, what's the idea behind the physical world? Well, there's something special that happens, as you know, when you bring people together and they get an opportunity to get to meet each other, especially when maybe they've been connecting online on Twitter or on Facebook and you kind of feel like you know that person. It's not really until you get a chance to get in front of someone to make those real human to human connections that 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 the, that the magic happens if you will and I've been to lots of conferences in the past and I just knew kind of what was a good conference and what wasn't a good conference and I thought to myself if I were ever to do a conference mm -hmm. I would want to make it so easy for people that are here to connect with each other because most conferences when you go to them you don't know anyone you kind of feel awkward mm -hmm. and I just wanted to create something that was so open and inviting so that anybody who was here would never have a reason to not enjoy themselves at least and meet people and hopefully build relationships that can help build businesses. I mean this definitely worked. I mean not only for me but to all the guys I talked to and I mean I've done conferencing business myself so I get a glimpse of what it means to organize all that and I've never met a conference that was so well prepared and has this balance you know of well giving the space for human connection and giving a lot of inspiring input as well and one of the master things is, uh, is the digital recording yes so who came up with the idea because it gives everybody space to say well I can invest time in the networking I don't have to be in the audience because it, I can do it afterwards if I want to. Well, funny enough, um, we've been doing a lot of things online for a long time before we did physical, so we really understood the technology and how to record all these sessions because it's like doing a webinar. So it's just a matter of capturing their screen slides and capturing their audio. And because of our background, we, for years we've been doing online conferences. So it was logical for us to allow people that couldn't make it to the conference to have access to uh, the recordings. And it made a lot of sense for us to give a deep discount to those that are already here so they can have access to the recording. So it was a double win for us, right? We have literally hundreds of people from around the world that could not afford like you did yeah. to come to San Diego and they can at least benefit from the content. They're missing out on the networking, as you know, yeah. <laughs> right? But at least they're benefiting from the content, which is very, very rich. So we just decided to discount it and give it to attendees. And, and those that wanted to could 
you know, either A, go to one session and not be conflicted because we have nine simultaneous sessions going on, yeah. knowing that they could get all the others, or they could just skip out of them completely like we're doing right now and do things like what we're doing and have interviews with people. Yeah. Um, I had the chance, I don't know whether it was like today or yesterday, um, you sat on a table, it was at lunchtime, yes. and you said it feels a bit like you're on your own wedding. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how do you see y this event through your eyes? Well, it's crazy, to be honest with you, because um, I, I would never imagine 1,700 people coming from more than 40 countries and faraway places like where you're from to come here. Um, and... I could not do this without a big team behind me. And I told the team that I want them to treat this like my, it is my wedding, which means don't interrupt me at all. Let me be me. Let me be here for the people. You know what I mean? And let me allow myself to just meet everyone and, like yourself and do these kinds of interviews. And that has given me incredible liberation and freedom to just walk around like I'm at someone else's conference. And I leaned to my assistant earlier this morning at the morning keynote and I said, This is so weird. I can't believe I'm at my own conference. It feels like I'm at someone else's. <laughs> great, great. So any, you know, probably learnings, insights that you took away from here? Well, what I learned is that people love to connect with other people, especially marketers. You know, whether you're a podcaster or a blogger um, or a social media marketer and you're used to interacting online, there is a craving for that human to human interaction. And I've learned that when you set up an environment that facilitates that, people just naturally love it. And in a way that I could never fathom, because even though there's 1,700 people here, wouldn't you agree there's still an intimate feeling going on? It is. Yeah. It is. And I, I just knew that if we programmed and created the right kind of experience for people, that they would just, those that wanted to, would just fall right into it and love it. And it's great to see that it, it does work with this many people. So... Um, Are there some things on your mind, you know, if we look to the future of the social media, well, examiner or especially the, the conference? So yeah. what is the vision actually? Because, I mean, might be limited anyway. Yeah. Maybe you can do this with a couple of people more, but it's, it's limited. Well, so. next year we're coming back to the same hotel. And yeah. one of the issues is space limitations, right? It's a really big hotel, so we can actually grow to about 3,000 here. Um, and then we're going to be looking at convention centers. And I'm not sure we'll ever yeah. go to convention centers because that really destroys the benefit of having your hotel room pop up, come down. You know what I mean? So we may have to end up capping it at a certain size. Or we may end up having to have more than one location. Do you understand where I'm going with that? Uh, definitely pretty well. I mean, to be honest, one of the ideas that brought me here is actually the question... Well, the, I'm, I'm from Germany, so... Let's talk about the bridge, Europe, yeah. Central yeah. Europe, and America. Yeah. So, um, I did Ireland conference might one, be. Yeah. Ireland, whatever. So, yeah. um, it's it's just like the idea yeah. that first of all, I think the European countries, most of them, are not that edgy. Right. So, um, this is wisdom to be shared not only for the American market. Yes. Uh, I mean, you, you do podcasting, so it's worldwide useful. Yeah. But having this conference and having this connection, maybe a bit more intercultural. I just yeah. heard about. Your attendees this year is more international than last year. Yeah, more than 40 so, countries, um, yeah. Yeah, why not ship it to, to Europe? The hard part, obviously, is shipping all the great presenters to Europe is very cost prohibitive, as you know. So there's a couple issues at hand from a technical perspective. Number one is being able to market just to the European audience. Is, we don't have a way to do that just yet. So we're going to obviously need to look for partners in Europe that have that audience that we could collaborate with. And then, of course, identifying all of the thought leaders in Europe is, a, is an issue we have not yet done. So those are the kind of things that we're going to have to struggle with. And, and, of course, the third thing is we're still a small company. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much that we can do. And this is only our second year. And I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> this is only our second year doing this, 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 this conference. So um, we don't want to grow too fast. That's yeah. the other thing. That's good. Yeah, so um, in the end, to sum it up for me, it's just like I would appreciate... Well, having the chance more often yeah. to get in touch uh, on a physical basis. Yes. I think uh, the world needs more conferences like that, pretty well organized. Yes. Putting the spot on the right thing means connection, interconnection. So right. it's not only Europe. So yeah. I think it's more a global thing. How can yeah. you carry a physical connection once around the globe? This yeah. is a, a, yeah. a big challenge. It's but a huge challenge, but... And, you know, yeah. probably not in the next year we'll have it figured out, but it's something we're, we're looking at on the horizon for sure. Yeah. So I'm looking forward for that and for, for the connection. And are we going to stay 
in touch. We keep in touch. I'm, I'm pretty Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to have you in my ear with your next podcast, probably next week or the week <laughs> okay. after that. So awesome. thanks very much. Thank you, Ingo. Yeah, can you imagine how much I enjoy talking to this godfather of social media conferencing? Oh boy, I had a series of great days with approximately maybe four hours of sleep per night, but it was definitely worth it. And now that you got a first impression of his social media marketing world, uh, also known as The Wedding, <laughs> let me give you my top seven conference secrets leading you to more value of your next conference, real or virtual. And uh, let me start with phase one. It's the event preparation, meaning the period prior to the event itself. And my first advice is polish your social profile. This one counts in no matter whether you're about to attend a physical or a virtual conference, your social profiles on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and co are your personal branding ambassadors if you want so. And people will see your name in the list of registered participants. They will look you up and when they've read your name maybe on the badge uh, right on the conference, uh, they will come back to your pages maybe weeks after the event holding your business card, trying to recall all the details from your first encounter maybe. So make sure your profile pictures match with your real life appearance. You know what I mean? Don't use, you know, like uh, docs as profile pictures or um, I think it's not advisable as well to have pictures that are maybe like five or six years old. So you might have, well, become more beautiful by now. So um, yeah, leverage it and make use of it. And um, yeah, take a nice one, take a nice picture because, uh, well, y you can uh, make the experiment yourself. You can actually see that we are visual animals and uh, you get a first impression. So make sure that people would like to get to know you. And um, I would personally advise you to differentiate. So maybe you fill in a batch with uh, the hash hashtag of the event uh, upcoming uh, right on your profile picture so everybody knows you instantly and that you go there. You can do this via very easy um, tools like Canva, for example. And you should synchronize your bio information um, on your different profiles like Instagram, um, Google+, Twitter, what have you, so um, that they strike out the most important aspects of, uh, yeah, your attitude or um, your details actually people can use to get into conversation with you or get a conversation started, like what you're passionate about and maybe unusual hobby that you do or... Your life motto might be one as well, uh, integrated in your bio. So skip the boring details of all your business um, profiles and um, add some real value here to um, build a bridge to people you don't know by now. And let people know that they can get more information about you if they want to. Business-wise, okay, if you have a blog or a special deal for people getting in touch with you at the event, like a promo code or whatever, um, you can add it there in the bio and um, if they refer to you as a person, they maybe get more pictures uh, and see what your life looks like maybe on your Instagram page if you have one. So this is my advice, uh, advice number one, polish your social profile and advice number two that also um, actually is relevant in the phase number one, the preparation phase, is connect up front. From day one you signed in for any upcoming event, you have something in common with all the speakers, the organizers and all the others actually participating. You share the thrill of antip uh, anticipation. Uh, anticipation. And that means leverage that and, well, um, 
and find out what else you have in common. The more people you connect up front and uh, the more little conversations you let already prior to the kickoff, the easier it will be to get into conversations and get straight to the aspects that really matter for you most uh, right on the event. So I recommend you say hello via Twitter or LinkedIn or Google Plus or what have you. And uh, as for the speakers, they are the natural endorsers of every event, so they are most likely happy to be featured by you in a tweet or two on Twitter. I mean, don't expect them to follow back right away, but uh, you can easily invest more of your efforts in those you're really keen on getting to know on the event maybe later down the road. So in case there's no Twitter list of all the speakers um, and their accounts provided by the organizer, just invest some work and set it up. That will surely bring you um, the first credits from other attendees and it will help definitely to stand out right away. So some conferences offer additional tools with exclusive access for attendees, tools like Bizaboo, B-E-Z-Z-A-B-O, Bizabu, or restricted LinkedIn groups. Um, you will find some examples and links in the show notes um, to this episode number 12. And in the end, it's all about, well, the human-to-human -human connection, as we heard and Michael Stelzner pointed out. And that connections start right away in the preparation phase. And don't give too much on social status figures like followers and, and count fan bases or the cloud scores or what have you. Trust your guts and be sure you will be surprised how many people have hidden potentials and it's on you to disclose these treasures and to get beyond the first impression only. So that leads us to the point number three and this is the phase Number two, it's the event already. So number three will be invest in being relaxed. One major key to benefit from more from your next event is to invest more energy into it. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so you need to optimize your quality time at the event and you need to be quite awake to be there when these rare moments of connections to the top speakers may occur all of a sudden. But if you're stressed and, and jet lagged and already exhausted on day one of the kickoff, you will not survive this marathon. So therefore you should invest in being in a good state of condition right when the event lifts off. So if it's a physical conference, um, first of all, you should mind the jet lag. So if you travel abroad, yeah, well, you need some time to get used uh, maybe to the different time zones so uh, to get comfy and relaxed up front. So this is already um, the first thing. Just schedule your time for flights and for arrivals. And um, yeah, I always, well, um, would recommend that you arrive at least one day in advance if you can manage uh, somehow. And if you do so, you can meet the guys and speakers who are already around. And this is a big advantage right at the beginning. So there's always some sort of an unofficial <coughs> sorry, get together from those who are around already. And I remember I recognized a tweet from the crew of the Social Media Marketing World 14 uh, to meet spontaneously at the bar of the Hyatt the day before the official event started. And it was a great, great meeting and a great chance to well get into contact and to start the human to human connection with great guys like Cliff Ravenscraft and, and Mark Schaefer, Mike Stelzner, Ian Cleary uh, and it was a very small group and it was a very familiar atmosphere so I made human to human connections which helped me to get even better into the event itself. Yeah um, if it's if it's a new city you go to, you haven't been there, um, I would recommend uh, you, well, getting to contact with a local first. So maybe for your first night or the first two nights uh, um, up front the event, you can choose, um, yeah, you can choose a flat via Airbnb, for example, and um, 
make sure you, you meet a local there. So you can minimize your distances during the conference by switching your um, yeah your compartment actually and uh, move into the hotel, which I would always recommend um, because during the event it's uh, very important to have like short distances. But if you travel to um, the location up front, I would always recommend you go there and stay with a local so you get some aspects of the location you wouldn't find in any like travel guidance um, or book. So um, yeah, this is what I did in San Diego as well and helped me pretty much. Uh, by the way, nice greetings to Firat. He was my Turkish uh, host in his Airbnb flat uh, the first three nights. And uh, yeah, this was a blast as well and is all contributing to my whole story of um, what I um, what I remember of this special event. And uh, don't forget to charge your smartphones, maybe take an extra charger with you because it's your key to the icebreakers, to Instagram pictures, to live tweeting and um, yeah, to be a part, active part of the conference. So um, yeah, this is always a problem, especially if you run on an iPhone, whatever. Normally it makes up to maybe half of the conference day, but definitely not the full one. So an extra charger would be helpful. Um, yeah, but don't stay on the smartphone the whole day and don't forget uh, about the real interaction, of course. So now what's different if you're heading um, to a virtual conference? Uh, I would uh, recommend that you be there in time because you always have some sort of a virtual conference room and um, it's very important that you check, double check and recheck your equipment. Means do you have an internet connection? Uh, does the Wi-Fi work properly? Are you checked in into the collaboration rooms? Do, do your headphones work? Do your microphone work? Whatever. So um, this is something you should do. And this does help you definitely to be more relaxed and um, yeah, to start and kick off the event the way you want it. That leads us to my secret number four, and that is stand out of the crowd. Stand out means make yourself recognizable and help people to remember you more easily, especially if you are attending huge conferences like the social media marketing world with 1,700 attendees. Um, one remarkable element that you're wearing actually makes a big difference. For example, you can wear um, a cap, for example. Um, normally people don't do that. Uh, I mean, if you attend a, a techie conference, everybody wears caps. So maybe you stand out if you are the only one who doesn't wear one. Uh, so you get the point. Actually stick out um, a standout. I mean, that could be done if you stick to an unusual t-shirt color, for example, or um, some sort of an um, accessory. Uh, do me a favor and check out on my friend Mike Gingrich from MikeGingrich.com. If you search him on Google and you go to the pictures mode, you will know instantly what I'm talking about. Uh, I just give you a hint because we are on audio here. Uh, it's a purple dream you're going to find. So um, this is something that he sticks to and uh, that makes him stand out and uh, easy to remember. Even if you can't remember his name, you still remember the guy, for example, with the purple um, shirt from last night, from last day, from the last session, from the speaker's board, whatever. So this is pretty helpful for other people. So you should consider whatever you like. Uh, shouldn't be maybe too kinky. But uh, in the end, it's up to you. Whatever you feel like um, should be easy and help you to stand out of the crowd. And a t-shirt uh, might be a means um, of an, yeah, for the networking parties as well and the get-togethers promoting your attitude and some special features of your bio maybe. Um, in the show notes you can find my t-shirt um, featuring Chuck Norris and my newest project, uh, the topinfluencer.com platform. I was wearing this t-shirt as an icebreaker on the social media marketing world networking party and yeah it was definitely something to talk about 
Uh, it was a nice motive for selfies and group selfies and uh, well it made people smile and this is uh, the best icebreaker you can actually add to the conference and to your first encounters so whatever you feel like um, let me know what you did or what your ideas are but i would highly recommend that you make use of it and um, in addition you can tag yourself you know there are some conferences that give you the name badges and the name tags and some of them allow you to add additional tags that make it more easy to get into conversations with you like uh, on every bar camp you have this name your three hashtags whatever it is so for me it would be like a podcasting uh, convention camp Hanover maybe so um, somebody who m meets me for the first time can easily just pick one of these hashta hashtags and start a conversation uh, and vice versa so um, if you attend a conference a physical conference where no hashtags um, and no icebreaker tags are provided just bring your own yeah you can easily just uh, um, well produce some small buttons and put them on or just uh, grab any stripes uh, and stickers and put them up your shirt you will see how easy it works and uh, by the way if nobody's uh, working with these um, hashtags or just these icebreakers except you um, it's of course another element to stand out and help people to get into conversation so um, again what's different if you're heading a virtual conference well um, of course it's not that easy to stand out in person but what you have is maybe your picture as I mentioned for your Twitter profile because um, um, doing live tweets um, during um, a virtual conference is something that I would highly recommend to stand out so be more active than most users actually and most participants in an in a virtual conference and um, you can actually leverage even the slides of the presenters uh, in some cases these slides are presented up front so you can have a look and maybe grab out some punchlines and some quotes that you like and uh, prepare them and um, schedule